In my last commercial, I got asked quite a lot of times how I actually made this shot. Well, this is a new series that I'm starting and it's called How I Made This Shot. So, let's go. So before we start with the editing process of the shot, there are a couple of things you actually need. Uh, one, any kind of tripod that actually holds your camera in place. It doesn't have to be fancy. This one is really not fancy. Coffee beans. You need quite a lot of coffee beans. These are not enough coffee beans, but that's the only ones that I have right now. And you need one single mighty fine looking coffee bean like this one. So you put all your coffee beans in some kind of uh, bowl. This is the only thing that I got at the time. And then you throw all the coffee beans onto the table so that they slightly overshoot, just like this. And for the second shot, you take this kind of coffee bean, you stick it onto an object that can be rotated, then you rotate all of that 360 degrees. And when you have that done and filmed, then it's time for some editing magic. After filming, you take those two shots and actually put them into the program of your choice that is able to mask something. In my case, this is After Effects. So I did some color grading right here. And uh, after color grading to a slight and good looking image, you end up with something that looks like this as the first shot. This is, of course, a shot in slow motion. This is all I needed. I only need two seconds. So you see, I have the bean right here and I only need about two seconds. That's the maximum number. And I'm pretty sure that is even way too much. So there are two versions that we can actually drop the background. First of all, it's st standard in every program. It's called masking. You can just put a mask around everything and then frame by frame go through it or you go every 10 frames and then you get closer if there is, needs to be a change. This takes some time, but it's absolutely fine. And the second thing is actually rotor brushing in After Effects, which is actually a pretty great tool to mask out stuff automatically, automatically. Um, you have to define the shape, you define the shape and then After Effects does its magic. Mostly it works out fine. If there is a small problem, you can just correct it with another brush and then it works its magic again. So let's do that. So you take the rotor brush and then you actually just define the shape that you want. Sometimes you have to correct it. You can do that by pushing Option or Alt in Windows, I guess. And then when you're happy with what After Effects actually selected or a rotor brush in the case selected as your main shape, you just push the space bar. This can take some time, so we're going to fast forward it right now. And this is actually what I got from it. A cutout bean, very, very well cutout bean. The next thing you have to do is you take the bean that you just cut out and drop it onto the other footage of the beans spilling. And in my case, I slightly time remapped the bean so that it actually is a bit faster in its rotation because I wasn't happy and satisfied with the overall speed of rotation. If you don't know how to do time remap, pretty simple as well. You just left click on to the layer you want to try time remap then you go to time and enable time remapping then you pick the last keyframe and just push it to the point where you want it to be so so that it shortens the time between those two points and when you're happy with the time remap that you've done you have to actually animate the beam position at the beginning where you want it to be in my case up and then you actually define the point where the bean that you just cut out actually splashes onto the other beans and uh, hits them, in my case, that's frame 15. And then you set another uh, position point, but this should have a longer time frame because the way the bean has to travel now is a bit longer than before. A couple of frames forward, let's say this. You can always change it in the end. Then you set a scale because you want it to come to the front. In that case, you push the scale back to the point where it actually dropped. You go to the point where you want it to, actually push it to the front. So when you've done that, then you should actually end up with something like this. Poof, and then it comes to the front. Then you can actually add another rotation keyframe to make it look more dynamic. One in the back that is actually in the standard setting and then one in the front to make it rotate slightly. So you can actually add some blur to it. In my case, it's a fast box blur to make it more realistic. You actually start with an amount of something around 20, push the 
the push the keyframe then you go to a specific point where it comes to the front you give it zero so that it's actually really visible and then when it's at its max velocity you give it another 20 so you have a small fade in into visibility and then it actually goes out and when you've done that correctly the actual shot looks like this So, I hope you enjoyed this small how I made this shot. If you have any other questions how I made this or that shot in my portfolio, then please put it on in the comments, ask me how I did that. Maybe if there is enough demand, then I will actually go down and tell you guys how I made that. If you're interested in more stuff, then click on the subscribe button. My name is Leech, and we'll see us in the next video. Until then, have a great day. Goodbye.